Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Always Aggressive Podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Massengo, alongside head coach Tony Ursuline, Tanner, Corey, and a new face today. We swapped out AJ for the second assistant coach on the team, Jake Souflon. Jake, great to have you today. How's everybody doing? Doing well, man. Everybody's good. Yeah, Everybody's good. 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 For now. <laughs> Souf's just getting warmed up here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get into some stuff. Well, actually, uh, before we get into everything that happened this past weekend because good news for everybody we have actual matches to talk about today we can stop speculating we can stop projecting 15 hours at jenison field house right we've got actual matches to talk about today but before we get into any of that we'll talk about jake a little bit uh went to nebraska from 2012 to 2016 put up a record of 109 and 32 a couple of spots at nationals a couple of spots at big tens uh spent three years as the assistant here so you've been with Coach Ursuline for quite a long time for just about every step of the process. You got recruited by Coach Ursuline. It's true. You wrestled for him. You wrestled against him, not on the mat, but yep. he was a coach when you were still at, he was coach here when you were still at Nebraska, and then an assistant coach, and now full-time staffer, assistant coach. What have all those steps been like? I mean, you've kind of spent every single, every single step that you could be under a coach, you've been you've been in all of those with Coach Ursuline. Will he tell the truth? I don't know. <laughs> I hope he does. I hope he does tell. The I truth. was really disappointed last night. I was prepping Souf, and I was I, I started asking about the home visit. You know what it was like having Santa Claus show up to his house in 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 Wisconsin. And he said he didn't do the home visit, so I was bummed about that. No, no, he wasn't there for that one. But Corey's um, gotten really good at editing editing in the bleep. So if you need to get something off your chest, <laughs> uh, now's the time. Now's the time. No, I mean, it's been a good process. Uh, you know, like I said, I've been with him every step of the way. Um, didn't have as much gray hair back then. Um, I was also more, I was going to ask that now. question, too. Jake was probably responsible for some of this. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, we had some other guys who probably definitely contributed to it. But, um, no, it was a fun process. You know, I, obviously, like, I really enjoyed having him as a coach. And a, and a mentor at, at Nebraska, and so it was. It was really easy to follow him here. Um, and not very often uh, does it happen where you are coached by. I mean, you, we see volunteer assistants or grad assistants move up, but you're working alongside coach as a full-time assistant coach now. So being a wrestler of his, and now working side by side, I mean, has to feel a little bit. It's feel a little weird being. You know, you were he was in charge of you for such a long time, and now you're working. Side by side. I mean, he's still in charge of me. Don't get yeah. me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, the, the, is that true? The hierarchy is <laughs> the hierarchy is still in place here, fellas. I, I, I've, I've had a firsthand firsthand view with this. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, he still coached me up to this day. Um, <laughs> you, you know, and obviously, like he, he's a really good guy, and, and that's you know the kind of guy I want to surround myself with. Um, so. I'm still learning stuff from him to this day. Uh, that's nothing has changed in terms of that. Okay. Well, before we get any tears out of coach, we'll move on to. <laughs> we'll yeah. Did on. anybody bring any Kleenex for this? I didn't know it was going to get sent. We, <laughs> no, we're going to get sentimental. In here, isn't it? It's a lifetime movie. <laughs> All right. We'll get into actual Hallmark matches. Channel. <laughs> into matches this past weekend. Uh, before we get into act, before we get into the each individual guys, uh, placed seven. How would you feel? Placed seven guys. How how do you feel about the weekend overall? You know, uh, there's a lot of good things we can build on. I would call it a solid start to the year. Uh, obviously, the highlight uh, being Kendall Coleman coming mm -hmm. off his red shirt. Um, you know, we certainly knew he was talented, but he was in a really tough field. And for him to go through the bracket the way he did and emerge as the champion, beating, uh, you know, I think it was the number six, the number nine, and number ten guys, um, you know, was, was the, kind of the highlight of the tournament. Um, but you're always left with thinking about the ones that got away mm -hmm. and especially, you know, my message to the team when you're talking about how um, team scoring goes, it's a lot different than duels. You know, we had a round or, or two there where we lost some very tight matches where maybe we were ahead by a point with 30 seconds to go, 10 seconds to go, and we came out on the wrong end. You know, in that situational wrestling, there's some things that we've got to work on. But what I was proud of is maybe where we dropped a close match, the guys came back through the bracket and got third or, or placed very high. And, and, you know, those team points will be valuable come the end of the year. And that's what you're looking for. So, you know, on one hand, I'm, I'm left thinking about some of the situational things where we lost some very tight matches. Um, 
Um, but we, we did come back through. We fought hard. I was, I was proud of the way the guys fought and the way they competed. And so it's, it's the job of fixing you know, those little situational mistakes that we made. But, but a very solid start. It was a deep tournament. We had talked the week before about how deep the tournament was going to be. I think there was maybe, what, 50, 50 ranked kids in the, in the field? And so uh, certainly there were some very deep weights. So uh, a lot to build on. Um, but we've got, we've got to fix some of those situational mistakes against the best competition. How difficult is that for both of you as coaches to relay that message to the team that those little moments, those those little point, those points in just a couple matches could be the difference between you know team ending up first, second, third, and the team not placing at all at Big Tens and Nationals. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I throw it to you. <laughs> um, Dangerous move, <laughs> right? Uh, but no, like like he said, like. Um, you know, at the end of the day, there's only 10 national champs. And so what's going to really make or break this team is the ones who aren't national champs, how are they coming back through on the backside? Mm -hmm. And so the way those guys competed, uh, I, I thought was very well. You know, they made mistakes, which is fine. You know, it's, it's the time of year we, we're still learning, we're still, we're still growing. And, um, you know, like as long as they're competing hard, which they did, uh, we can always pull things from it and get better. Mm -hmm. Well. You mentioned it, Kendall Coleman went in only a first place winner from this past weekend. I'm sure you spend plenty of time with him, Coach Sufon, in the, in the wrestling room with him. What has, you know, I'm sure you guys saw his potential before this weekend. What, does, what did he learn about himself coming out of this weekend where he goes up against the ranked guys that you mentioned? And not only a couple ranked guys, but a couple guys that he'll probably see again at least once or twice uh, for the rest of the season, what does that do for his confidence moving forward for the rest of the season? You know, I think um, you know it's 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 a double-edged sword here for me, but I think he learned he's pretty good mm -hmm. if he sticks to his game plan. Sure. And and Jake, you're right. Jake does a lot with Kendall. I mean, that's that's the guy who's with him daily. You know, down mm -hmm. in the room early in the morning. You know, and, and doing the really hard work with uh, with Kendall. So I mean, props to Jake for for where Kendall. You know how much he's, how far he's come from his red shirt year to now. But I think he's learned that he's pretty good um, at that weight and that he can compete against the best. You know, at the same time, now our job is to make sure he understands that he's gotten here because of the hard work he's put in, and he has to keep his nose to the grindstone. It, it's only one tournament, mm -hmm. and while we're proud of Kendall and and the and the progress he's made, uh, it's a nice honor. You know, Big Ten Wrestler of the Week as mm -hmm. well. He's he's really got to kind of get down the work of still continuing to get better. You know, that's what we hope for all of our guys. As Jake mentioned, it's early in the year. Guys made mistakes. That's to be expected. That's why we go to these open tournaments. Um, but now it's it's make progress and improve. And that's that's Kendall's job. It's a great start. But hey, let's let's keep progressing. Let's see how good he can be. I had a fun note yesterday with Kendall getting Big Ten Wrestler of the Week. Threw it at Coach Ersland late in the day. I was like, last time we got a Big Ten Wrestler of the Week, he was <clears throat> dead on. He missed the month. He, he was one month off, but otherwise he got the wrestler, the year. He even knew who he wrestled to, to get it. So And it was? So no, it was Danny Sabatello. He wrestled Zane Richards from mm -hmm. Illinois in a duel. Um, I think Zane at the time was, was third or fourth, I believe, in the country. I couldn't um, believe he pulled this out. So it was wild. Head coaches are a different breed. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, 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 uh, you tend to remember both the, the good times and the bad times, right? They, they, they fair. burnt into your memory. So, uh, I got one other one thing for Jake. So, Jake, you know, coach gave you the props. You know, you're the guy that's in there with Kendall every day. You know, we go out there and we watch him do what he did. Um, looked like it was really hard for guys to keep their hands on him. Um, you know, he was all over, all over the mat, um, just constantly attacking, constantly. How hard is it for you to keep your hands on him in the room? <laughs> like, I, I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're working with him all this different stuff, and you're, but you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Like, what is it like on a daily basis going head-to-head -head with that kid? Uh, yeah, he's got a very dangerous skill set uh, with, with his, his speed and athleticism. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to make someone look stupid, uh, and you got you saw a couple of times this weekend that that happened to, to some guys. And so uh, he jumped over a dude on one takedown. Yeah, he it, pump he pump faked the guy, and the guy dove to his feet, and he literally he like I mean it's the kind of stuff you see on a highlight tape somewhere. He dove over him and like just got his two. 
and he made it look pretty routine. And the rest of us just stood there with our mouths open, looking at like what just happened. <laughs> right, that, I mean, that's exactly what I was thinking of too. We sat there in the corner, we were just laughing because we we're like, uh, "Did you teach him that?" <laughs> I didn't teach him that. Um, and you can't teach that to everyone because no, it's not going to work with no. Him. Like, no one, not very many people are going to be able to do that successfully the way that he did. No, and so yeah, with with, with his skill set, he's he's a very dangerous wrestler. Can score from just about any any position. So. Um, but you know, at, at coming off a weekend like like he had, you know, I gotta I gotta put the pause on him and remind him that you know he's good, but he's still got a long way to go to be where he wants to be. So uh, you know, I kind of gotta put him back in place. But uh, he, he's definitely a dangerous wrestler. And Kendall, uh, recording his first official matches as a Boilermaker, he wrestled last season in his redshirt year, uh, all unattached. <laughs> Another guy that wrestled all unattached last year, getting his first uh, official matches, Emil Sondland placed second uh both guys actually placed second unattached last year at miss at michigan state as well uh but that was in the fresh soft division right that was in the freshman sophomore division uh both in the open this year wrestling for real getting real matches that count towards their record uh for their career record Simon's matches almost all of his matches that he wrestled were very close matches is that a good thing for you guys to see as coaches, to see him be able to, to grind out those close wins rather than, uh, we'll get into Max Lyon in a, in a minute, but a little bit different style that Talk that about Sondland, some points. Right, a little bit different so- style that Sondland took, and it was probably good to see him get in there and win some tight matches that come down to the end. You know, with Emil, um, he is, he's, he's gritty, tough, he's solid defensively. Uh, we would like to see, I'm sure Jake will speak probably the same thing, he might, you know, might just, uh, you know, ditto. But we, we do. Uh, him scoring more points has been an emphasis of ours since he's been here. We do want to see him continue to increase his aggressiveness, mm-hmm. the number of what we call scoring holds, you know, that he that he sees, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, give himself looks at points. He's capable of scoring more, but it is nice. Listen, he's gritty, tough. He's in shape. He, he cuts his weight right. Like, you know, he's, he's going to be in every match because of those things, and you don't want to take that away, but we do want to add – to his scoring, you know, where where uh, Kendall, you know, man, he was scoring points left and right. You know, we kind of want to see Emil, you know, up hitting his attack rate, the number of points he's putting in the match. But I listen, I am proud of him. He comes ready. He does a lot of things right. We just need to focus on giving him a few more looks at scoring points. And if he does that, he's going to make that next jump. I mean, I think he's he's in number 19 in the polls now. Mm-hmm. And and if you want to climb into that next group of guys. You know, we want to see him score a few more points, give us a few more looks at takedowns and turns. You know, the guy can turn, Emil can turn too. So he just needs to kind of open up a little bit more. And I think as he gets comfortable being the guy, you're going to see that happen. But he does. He's got to get comfortable maybe, you know, risking more and, and, and knowing that he, he can get more. I got, a, I got a question before we jump on from these two. Kendall and Emil, you guys obviously you recruited them for a reason. You thought they were going to be something. And then you put it on pause for 18 months while they redshirt as freshmen. And I remember talking to both of you at, at different points last year. Oh, Sondland's gonna be gonna be good. Kendall Coleman, so exciting to watch. He's gonna be good. To see it finally pay off, first of all, has got to be gratifying a little bit. But also, how hard is it to put that on pause? You know, I know that's mm. normal within the sport, but how how difficult is that as a coach? <clears throat> um, well. I was a little bit different because I go to all the red shirts last year I did, so I was with both those kids all throughout last year. So, um, you know, it wasn't necessarily in pause. Obviously, they weren't in the starting lineup, but I was with them most weekends while they were competing. Um, So for me, it was – I've got to see both those guys come a long way. Uh, You know, Sunland was was doing really big things last year in those open tournaments. He had a lot of turns, a lot of tags. So – now it's just, you know, we, we've jumped levels. We're no longer wrestling red shirts. We're wrestling, uh, you know, varsity guys, national rank guys. So for him, it's just to keep progressing, keep attacking, because uh, he's a tough guy to take down. You know, he's got great hips, great counter offense. But um, for him to take that next jump, it's being able to get two to three takedowns on his own per match. And I think uh, that's something he's, he's working very hard at doing. And, and by the end of the year, you know, I expect him to be there. Well, the last guy I want to. Uh, hit on from this past weekend, Max Lyon, we just mentioned, had a great offensive weekend, scored 73 points in his six matches, had three tech falls and one major decision, averaged 12 points a match. Now, granted, it's only one weekend, but last year he averaged six points a match, so doubling 
uh, what he usually scores. Is there something that you guys are seeing out of him, you know, especially going into actual matches in the wrestling room maybe, that he's found some new offensive things that he likes, some things that are working better for him to be able to score points, to, to rack those points up like he did this weekend? I think uh, he had a, a pretty strong weekend uh, on top, you know, is where that point differential per match came from. I don't know exactly how many, um, you know, back points he had this weekend, but I thought my impression, general impression, was he was turning more opponents, and mm-hmm. that's something he's worked very hard on with Coach Shop and obviously having Daniel Lewis in the room as well. So I think his focus is there. But, uh, you know, your progression as an athlete, you know, he, I think he's obviously a lot more comfortable, too, with his game plan on his feet and what he needs to do. You know, the interesting thing is he scored a ton of points, so there's a lot of really bright um, bright things for, for Max to grab onto there. But I know he was disappointed. You know, he was one of those guys when we're talking about situational wrestling where in the quarterfinals he was up by one point with maybe it was 10, 15 seconds left. Does that sound yeah. about right? And 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 just through a series of a, of a flurry had gotten a locked hands call against him and then gave up the escape to lose at the very end. And that was an athlete who went on to be in the finals. So while um, you know Max had a lot of good things there that he can really build upon, I know you know a situation like that is going to really drive him. Max is a very motivated kid, and you know that's something that he knows he, he let get away from him, and he's going to learn from it. He's going to work on it, and he's going to be better because of it. So while you know he was scoring a lot of points and we like that there's something there i think that's a lot a lot of points yeah it's going to really drive max so because he he didn't get what he came to do he came to win the tournament that didn't happen uh and that's one of those little situations that i can point to where i know he's really focused on you know making a big jump even as this week is coming you know he's he knows he's capable of more and he's really a driven kid right now i know you never want to lose is that a good thing sometimes because like you said this is going to be something that drives him forward for the next couple weeks or months Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say it, it mm-hmm. piggybacking off of that. It's a good ta- it's a good film weekend because he had both success and he's got very clear things that caused him to lose a match that put him on the backside that to have to work his way back. So very clear things on both ends that would say these are the things you did right and these are the things you need to work on. Yeah, I think um you know, I to me, as an athlete, uh, your evaluation shouldn't depend on the winner or the loss, right? I think sometimes it's, it's a trap when you win because, you know, the fact that you won, it made it easier on yourself and it's easy to gloss over maybe right. the deficiency that you had. And so that can be problematic, you know what I mean? So sometimes that's why losing, it forces you to examine it. And he lost, he lost in a very tough way. But I, I honestly, as a coach, right, you should never gloss over. You, know, you, you look at each match from a non-win or non-loss standpoint and just, okay, how did I perform? And, and then I know that gets a bad rap or it's, it's just, it's coach speak, right? It's always the process, trust the process. But truly that's what it is because you can't make yourself feel better while well, I won the match and then ignore the problem. Mm-hmm. You know, so often losing forces you to examine the problem and that's why it's so much more beneficial sometimes. You know what I mean? But as, as a coach to your athlete, Man, you don't want to you don't want to gloss over it just because you won. I mean, let's good news for Kendall. Kendall was in the other day watching film with him right away with with Jake, and I, I stopped in and watched a little bit of it. And okay, the great news is Kendall, you won, but then you could see how much better we can be. So as long as he doesn't ignore the fact that there's ways to get better, where he kind of maybe you know his feet got too settled and he was on his heels, or he, he wasn't using his fakes. As long as you evaluate yourself in that way, it's a good thing. Is that something that you're still working on as a young coach, uh, working with these guys? I mean, we just talked about, you know, guys that you work with pretty regularly with Kendall, Emil, and uh, Max, all guys that had pretty good success this weekend, but being able to enjoy the success with them, but also kind of bring them down a notch that, hey, there's some stuff that we got to work on. Um, Yeah, actually, it's uh, it's, uh, (coughs) funny you bring this up because I had this conversation last night. Um, with someone and it was like you know I, I I want to you know build them up they did well but at the same time like you know I gotta I gotta bring it back too because mm-hmm. you know we still made a lot of mistakes and we gotta get better at it. so uh, it's always that fine line and trying to find it and as a young coach you know I'm I'm still working my way through it uh, as well mm-hmm. uh, other guys that placed this Saturday just to give them some love too. Uh, 125, Devin Schroeder got third. Uh, Travis Ford Melton, third place unattached in the freshman and sophomore division. Uh, at 41, Parker Phileas placed third. And at 97, Bruner placed third unattached as well. 
So just to be honest and open with everybody, some of those placings are slightly misleading. Mm -hmm. uh, NCAA changed the rule a couple years back. You can only wrestle six matches in a day. And so some guys ran out of matches, and they couldn't, like Max Lyon. <clears throat> He had a shot to wrestle for third, ran out of matches, so he kind of had basically defaulted to sixth. Mm. Um, Parker Phileas got to those Conci semifinals, and the guys that he was supposed to wrestle had run out of matches, so he defaulted to third. So, well, you know, obviously props to those guys. They did get to the placing rounds. They were going to place regardless, um, but some of their actual placing performances um, were a little misleading. Devin Schroeder, not one of those, wrestled true all the way to third, and uh, – you know, another guy that scored a ton of points. Um, yeah, it was a good he, weekend for Devin, and you had to have been excited about what you saw. I mean, you kind of already, you've got high hopes for Devin to start the season anyways, and then he came out and, you know, kind of got the ball rolling a little bit this weekend. Yeah, no, I, I was really happy with the way he responded, too, because um, he had a tough situation there in the quarterfinals where he lost, you know, and he's, he's a guy who was going in expecting to win the tournament, you mm -hmm. know, absolutely. And, you know, he had, a, you know, a, a very tough loss in the quarterfinals, and he came back through, uh, took it the right way. You know, he, he wasn't hanging his head. He came back through hard, uh, saw the same athlete that had beaten him, uh, you know, in a somewhat controversial fashion for third and, and, and got the win. Mm -hmm. So you like to see a guy go out of the tournament that way. He responded the right way. Um, but again, you know, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of tournament wrestling, you, you know, We've got to be better there where, you know, we're putting ourselves in the finals instead of just coming back for third or, you know, getting third instead of fifth, you know, to score those points. That's the one thing I I'm really want to harp on with our, with our athletes is, you know, those, that little 20-second situational wrestling things, need to, we need to clear those up. If we do that, we'll be in great shape. Well, moving on to this coming weekend, you've got journeyman duels this coming weekend. So it's Wednesday when we're talking. You're coming off of Michigan State Open this past weekend, so you've got just about everyone on the team that's going to wrestle this coming weekend, wrestled this past weekend. Everyone got a bunch of matches this past weekend. So how is it for these some of these new guys, especially the process of both recovering and preparing for the weekend ahead while they, they try to get themselves right, get themselves uh, kind of back to baseline from this past weekend, and then also preparing for pretty uh, good competition that you'll see this coming weekend with Arizona State, Utah Valley, and Buffalo? I mean, our preparation doesn't change, um, really. You know what I mean? It, you know, it, it stays the same. Mm -hmm. you know, we're focused on the same things. Um, you know, maybe you adjust a little bit based on injury or things like that, right? I mean, we just had a, a tournament where a lot of guys wrestled a lot of matches, and so you might come up a little bit beat up. So you might adjust slightly for some guys, but honestly, um, the, the, the process stays the same. You know, we're working on correcting some mistakes, those situational things we talked about. Um, but I think the one thing the young guys have to understand, and we talked about this a little bit, on, especially on Monday, is uh, just don't expect to feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't you can't base your wrestling on needing to feel good to perform, and you've got to just say, hey, it's time to wrestle. You know what I mean? And that's I think that's a big deal for young guys to learn because the grind is real. This was a deep field. They wrestled a lot of matches. They should be sore. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like don't expect to feel good for for the rest of the year. Don't need to feel good to perform. Yeah. You know, at least from my standpoint, that's kind of where I like to see the young guys, especially understand. Hey. You know, understand you can perform well, um, but you don't need to feel good to do it. Yeah, when I got my first job out of, uh, actually in high school, I had to be at work at 3.30 in the morning, and one thing my boss told me was, you're not going to get used to getting up at 3.30 in the morning, you're going to get used to operating on less sleep. And that seems <laughs> to be in the similar vein of, you're not going to be at 100% probably for the rest of the season, you have to learn to be able to perform at less than 100% or you know, you're going to go up against, you're going to have back-to-back -back weekends, especially when Big Ten season starts. You're going to have back-to-back -back weekends, maybe in the same weekend, where you're going to face two multiple guys of the toughest competition you've seen all year. Yeah. I mean, if you feel great, it's a bonus, right? Yeah. If, you feel, if you feel great, it's a bonus. But mentally, you've just got to be prepared that I, I'm going to, right now, I, I got to find a way to go out and get this done. And, and that's how you need to approach it. Mm -hmm. Well, big weekend ahead with Buffalo, Utah Valley, Arizona State. Arizona State's uh, reputation speaks for itself. Uh, Buffalo and Utah Valley both received votes to be ranked uh, preseason. Not too many teams have wrestled duels, uh, but still very good talent, very good teams that you're gonna go up against this weekend. Uh, what are some of the things that both of you guys are talking to the team about that, to focus on this weekend with 
more good competition ahead of them. Want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. <clears throat> um, you know, for us, nothing changes, right? Like, if these guys go out and wrestle their style of matches, they should win. Um, you know, we believe in their talent level, and that's why they're here. Uh, and so, at the end of the day, it's just them going out and doing doing what, what makes them successful. Uh, we don't want to alter, you know, based on you know what this guy from Buffalo does or what this guy from Arizona State does, right? Like, it's just, just focus on you. Go out, wrestle your match, and, and you'll be in a good spot to win talk about uh, before we get out of here is travel a little bit. So last weekend, made the trip up to East Lansing, a few hour drive northeast. This weekend, taking a flight out to New York for tournament. And then next weekend, taking a flight to North Dakota. So tropical North Dakota, please. <laughs> right. North Dakota in November. So back to back to back weekends, uh, especially for some of these young guys who aren't used to this travel. And, and even some of like the redshirt freshmen that, that weren't traveling every single weekend that may be traveling now, uh, and maybe Jake, you can speak to this because you're not to not to call you old coach, but your <laughs> wrestling career, your wrestling career is more recent, dangerous than than coaches is of the travel that these guys the experiencing the travel of kind of recovering and getting back on a plane late nights, staying with get, being on a bus, uh, acclimating to that kind of style, that lifestyle. Is that filed under potentially dangerous? Is it stay with wrestling terms there? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I don't know. Like he's got the gray hair. Like you can't you can't hide from it. Um, it's travel. Kind of fun. I love traveling. Uh, back when I was competing, you know, in, in college and looking up to this guy here, um, it's a lot of fun. You know, you get to check out all these different colleges, go to all these different places. Um, you know, you wrestle some of the best kids every weekend, so uh, it, it's just fun. That's that's why we're in the sport, right? We love to compete. Uh, like we get to travel, like I said, a bunch of cool places. We were in Florida last year. Uh, I'm a big Vegas fan myself, so like you know, <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tony used the word degenerate at one point. I'm not, I, I don't want to go any. I don't want to go any deeper than that. But I'm, I think that was the word. There's another big word. Uh, but it's fun, uh, and, and you get to do it with with your family, right? Because that's what we are. We're a family. Uh, we get to cheer each other on, have each other's back. So uh, it's just fun. That's that's the word I gotta say about it. Well, does the team see it the same way? I mean, these guys, they've got a strict schedule even when they're on the even when they're on the road i'm sure you try to keep it as similar as possible when you're at home uh to when you're traveling but do these guys see it the same way that that you might that it is fun you get to go out and you get to see a bunch of different colleges uh but they've also got work that they've got to do too i I think it's like anything right there's an ebb and ebb and a flow to everything and but in general i would say yeah I, i really i personally enjoy these moments with the team as well i think they do too like it's the time to relax and you really get to know the guys, right? I mean, you'll have a lot of conversations sitting on the bus or in the airport, you know what I mean, that you don't always get to have a chance on campus because they're busy with class or doing this or doing that. And so you have opportunities to really have conversations where you get to know these guys and what's going on in their life. So I really enjoy it. Yeah, travel can get a little old, but but I think, you know, that these times they really bring you close together and they, they make you tight and it's a good thing. Um, I think the other thing it teaches you too uh, is there's just, you can't have it, you can't be on all the time, right? Like you can't always be like, okay, you know, super intense right now, you know, let's get ready to do battle, right? You've got to learn how to turn it off, turn it on. You know, it's just like in a tournament. You got to be ready when you put your foot on the line and you're going to go to war for seven minutes and then you're, it's going to be done. You're going to go back in the stance, unlace your shoes, grab a little something to eat, kick your feet up, wind down until mm. it's time to go to battle again. And so I think, you know, with that traveling, you learn how to kind of turn it off and turn it on because you can't, you can't be running that high all the time. And, and so, you know, you, I think you learn, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of the rhythm of travel and competing. And I'm sure traveling, I mean, you spend in the airport, you're in hotels, you're at dinner, whatever the case may be. Uh, similar to the paintball weekend a couple weekends ago, it's just time for you guys to spend together, to spend with the team. They get to... As long talk. as I don't screw it up, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's, true. That's right. <laughs> Director of Ops here, as long as he doesn't screw it up, they have plenty of downtime. They're not constantly <clears throat> rushing around. It's a whole new adventure. Uh, it's for both of you guys and for the, the rest of the coaches, just getting mm-hmm. that time where you're not down their throats, you're not barking at them, you're not pushing them, pushing them farther than they want to go, you get a time to relax and you get to be just, you get to be a coach, but you get to be part of that family 
when you when you sit down and relax. Ah, absolutely, mm-hmm. and, and that's part of what I really enjoy about coaching. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just spending time with the guys. You know, the, the the wrestling is is exciting and it's fun, no doubt. I mean, this is why we're in it for that competition. But uh, to to really get to understand and know these guys, uh, and, and Jake called it, you know, your family. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's that's you know v- tremendously satisfying. And one thing we always hear. Uh, ex-athletes talk about is just missing that camaraderie that you guys as coaches especially uh, you know Jake with your like we just talked about your wrestling career being a little bit more recent uh, you get to just partake in that camaraderie that a lot of ex-athletes who don't go into coaching say that just across the board they all miss being able to, to have that. Every time he says that about the competition, I just hear him call Tony old. What about you? Corey? Yes, absolutely. Every single time. So here's the thing. I'm not. I'm not I, I, I want to know when I turn into the old guy at this table. I'm not, I'm not calling Coach old, but we've had a couple of people. We've had some uh, people talk about our backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. Vega, our Vega and AJ matches, right? I'm not saying that I could take Tony. Good. But I'm just saying. I'm glad. I'm you're just not saying, saying that it would it. be entertaining for people to watch Tony. <laughs> kick somebody's butt who's 20 years younger than him at halftime of one of our duels. I don't I I really want to go deeper on this, but I'm going to let it go. I got another. Can I just go? What does have a coach's question at some point? <laughs> Jake that was all off the record. Jake wants to go back on. I the want record. to go back on record here. I'm, I'm Team Vega, by the way. Thanks for pulling us back in, Jake. Yeah. Jake goes Team Vega. <laughs> I Shocker. like it. It's, yeah. I like it. That's good. The rivalry continues. From what it seems, Vega needs guys on, yeah. his, on his side of the map. Well, he's, he's buying me a dinner for saying that. So, Team Vega, I got you. <laughs> he said, buy <laughs> me a dinner. There's the truth. Actually, I love his idea of, of making Tanner the baseline no. competitor. Yeah. First of all, no. Second of all, I think Leroy is going to be with us next week to further explain what he how what he's thinking about doing to me, okay. which is highly entertaining and never going to happen. So, Coach, I'm it, terrified. In that match, if if we can get AJ and Vega, are you gonna? Would you be? Would you ref or would you pick? A, would you pick a corner? No, I'd have to be the official. Yeah, <laughs> I'd have to be the official. I feel like you can't take a side. No, I can't take a side. Are you going to call it straight? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I'm the elder statesman here, apparently, so I got to shoot it straight. I still think, I, I think you could take anyone on the coaching staff, Tanner included. I appreciate that. <laughs> we really don't need to talk. <laughs> All discussion of me wrestling should be further tabled because I haven't done it once. Well, that's not true. I did it a little bit in like PE in high school, but that doesn't count. I'm never putting on a singlet in wrestling for, 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 the, for the good of the group and those listening at home. Like, it's just not happening. So before we start, before we start wrestling right now, let's get out of here. Uh, if there's anything you want to hear coaches talk about, uh, any feedback, any comments, questions that you'd like to hear talk about, please post, comment, tweet, at Purdue Wrestling across all social media platforms. And coaches, good luck this coming weekend heading out to Journeyman, Journeyman Duels uh, up in New York.